Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are pleased to be joined today by TRD President David Wilson and TRD USA General Manager Tyler Gibbs. As announced earlier this week, David has officially confirmed his upcoming retirement after 35 years of service to TRD and over a decade as president of the organization. Through his tenure as president, David has overseen the first NASCAR Cup Series championship and Daytona 500 wins for Toyota, along with many significant wins and titles in the NASCAR Xfinity and Truck Series, NHRA, Formula Drift, ARCA, IMSA, and many other motorsport series across the country. The Virginia area is also has special importance to David as he is a graduate of Virginia Tech. Tyler Gibbs is also joining us today um, as he will assume the title of TRD USA president later this year. Tyler has worked for TRD since 1996 and currently serves as general manager of TRD USA, working closely with Toyota Motor North America, overseeing race team and driver partnerships across all motorsports series that Toyota and Lexus compete in. Also in the room, we're pleased to be joined by many of our teams and drivers who are competing here this weekend, as well as a few people um, on the computer here as well. Uh, before we open up to questions, uh, David, we'll start with you. Can you just talk about uh, your decision, your retirement decision, um, and what your longstanding success and successful tenure at TRD has meant to you? Well, first I'll, I'll say that uh, I think I know how Martin Truex Jr. felt. Uh, a few weeks ago. I'm generally pretty comfortable after all these years sitting up here and, uh, and talking to um, this group of people. Um, but I'll, I'll admit I'm not today. I'm, uh, I'm a bundle of nerves and, um, and uh, yeah, here we are. I, I, I'm looking out at the crowd and I'm trying not to actually go around the room because I know I'll just get emotional. but the support um, to see so many people here that I care about, uh, so many friends, uh, means the world to me. Um, the past couple of days have been completely overwhelming. Um, the kindness and the generosity that has come my way is uh, has truly been special and remarkable. And, and it's been wildly uncomfortable, <laughs> wildly uncomfortable because, you know, we come from a place, I come from a place where we celebrate the team and not the individual. On my very best day, I'm simply a reflection of this team, TRD and Toyota, the, the accomplishments, they're, they're not my accomplishments, they're our accomplishments. And so um, for that, I am so grateful and I'm so proud, um, but but it's time. It is time to hand the keys over, and and I am I am so proud of this guy that's sitting next to me. Um, and there are so many parallels to us coming up through the company for years. I enjoyed kind of toiling in the background, and I would be kind of that that guy behind the scenes, and and somehow, some way, ten, eleven years ago. I was thrust into this spotlight, if you will, and it it really does seem like just the other day. But um, Tyler Gibbs, no relation, um, will um, will be great for our company. Will continue to be great for our company. Um, he's incredibly well deserving of this, and as a friend, I'm. Um, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so happy for you. And Tyler, uh, what does it mean to you to be following in David's footsteps? So um, we were in Washington, D.C. on Thursday, and um, one of the things that we were talking about after the meeting that we had was we were both a bit uncomfortable with the release and just the amount of um, congratulations that we received and, and the number of people that responded. And so... Um, I'm going to apologize to Dave that I'm going to add a little bit to that. Um, when people, particularly in this room, um, know or hear about TRD and hear about Toyota, um, they picture Dave. Um, Dave is synonymous with TRD and Toyota in this garage and in our sport. And um, those are some really big shoes to fill. Um, I am humbled to be in this position. I am excited about it. I think back um, when 
I got to TRD. TRD was a grown-up organization when Dave started at TRD. Um, TRD was 10 years old. Um, we were a speed shop, and you could buy some performance parts that you could put on your car, and we'd even install them for you if you needed us to. Um, we were getting into off-road racing, and we were getting into sports car racing in America, but we were pretty new at this whole thing. And when you look at TRD and where we are now, um, the things that we can do and the things that we get to do and the things that we've done over the last 35 years, Dave's fingerprints are all over all of those things. Um, Pam mentioned some of the accomplishments, but there are many off track that people don't see and don't know um, that have built our organization into what it is. And so, again, to be able to step into this opportunity, I, I shared with a number of people this week, it's, um, it's a privilege to lead a team like we have at TRD. Uh, the team that Dave's built over the last 35 years, again, giving us incredible opportunities week after week, day after day, um, is really just a, a humbling experience. And so we are, we as a team are going to uh, continue that tradition of success that Dave has, uh, has built. Thanks. We'll open up to media questions. Al? Come with you. Al Pearson, Auto Week. David, a lot of us in this room have done this for a long time, some much longer than others. Some in this room, including me, are struggling with the idea of retiring. What was it that you saw or what tipped you to the point where you said, okay, I've done all I can do, or what, what got you to this point? Because I, I, need, I need to get there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it starts really by being in a position where you comfortably know that you can step back and, and the team will move forward. And um, I, I've known for years, honestly, that Tyler, Tyler's the guy. Um, he's way, so much smarter than I am. He has a work ethic of, of an absolute animal. And so again, it just started by just having a level of trust and comfort that we are going to to keep moving forward. Um, the other side of it, Al, is simply it, it's it's the clock. You know, I turned sixty three this year. Um, there's some there's some family circumstances that 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 have played their way into it. Um, I, my wife and I adopted our, our two grandsons, so so at sixty three, I'm I'm changing diapers. I have a one year old and a four year old at home. And um, and those boys need me, and and I need them. And um, there are some parallels with friends in this room, with friends in the industry um, that I've made through that. And so, again, I'm 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 at peace. My heart, my heart is is full. And um, and while we're all here, we're all wired to be competitive and. And we're still here because of what we do on track. Many uh, of my close friends have heard me more recently talk about what fuels my soul and, and what I will be most grateful for. Um, and it's not, it's not, you're not going to find it in a box score. You're going to find it in the, in the hearts of these people um, and the relationships and the trust and the love that I've developed um, for so many people in this garage. Um, I, I talked about the, you know, Tyler and I talked about the, the attention and, and, and sometimes you, um, you lose sight of how many people you have touched over the years and to not to have not only, you know, industry folks and, in, and, in, in NASCAR and teams, um, but competitors, um, my friends from Ford and Chevrolet, um, to reach out and and I like to think that that Toyota's entry in the sport is um, is left a mark and and that our sport is stronger for it not me but Toyota and and the relationship and the professional relationships that we have uh, with our competitors um, might seem strange but I'm as proud of anything because we we all share the same uh, the same goals we can work together to help make our sport better and uh, that's the way it should be 
Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. This question is for both of you. Kind of touched on this, David, but what do you think is your lasting legacy as you step away? I, it, it's pretty simple. Um, I'd like to, again, believe that TRD is better um, than when it was when I got here, and, and, and I'd like to believe that our, our sport in, in Toyota's uh, position in our sport has has left uh, the you know NASCAR in in a better place. Um, you know, again, coming back to when we entered twenty years ago, we didn't have a we didn't have a relationship with the sanctioning body, uh, and and we didn't have certainly a relationship with our competitors the way we do now and. Um, you know, so much has changed. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the way, you know, the, the competitive model that, that Toyota brought to our sport. We've changed the way the sport goes racing. And I love that. I love that. And, um, and so, but there's, there's, a, there's a lot that I'm, I'm really um, happy about and, and proud of. And Tyler, what do you think David's lasting legacy is? You know, honestly, you'll, you guys will know a few of them um, just in terms of our team members that you get to work with here at the track. But um, on Tuesday, Dave shared um, his news with our team members. And um, the response from our team members was incredible. Um, they, they recognize um, the opportunities that Dave has provided for them. And so for me, it's, it's TRD. It's, it's our team. It's the people. Um, Dave's impact on TRD will go far, far beyond when he decides to, to walk out the door in December. But um, for me, it's, it's that. It, it's, it, it, his legacy is our history. It's our people. It's our team. It's the culture that we have. Um, yeah, it's humili Dave's humility. It's um, his competitive nature when he stands in front of our team members um, each week and, and talks about the different things that happened over the course of the weekend, what's happening in our business. Um, he is sharing with family, and, and so there's a huge element to that. And, and I appreciate some of that can come off as cliche. I certainly don't mean it to be that way, and I don't think our team members would at all take it that way. Our team members, if they were listening to this, would would identify very, very personally with that. So, Go up to Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Uh, David, what would be your advice to Tyler? Oh, that's a good one, Bob. Um, <laughs> you know, um, there's not much advice I can really give. Tyler is, um, is so ready for this job, but, um, but I think he, he has come to appreciate as well what, what I have come to appreciate, and that is that, you know, we're, we're given we're given this a tremendous uh, privilege, this opportunity to to lead, and, um, and and never forget that you know you are um, just the, the the point person. You're that this part of the iceberg that sticks out of the water, but there's a you know there's a, a tremendous group of people uh, behind you. But again, Tyler Tyler knows that. Um, the other the other side of it is is more. You know, personal this the, this vocation that we've chosen, you know, and I can look at everyone here and they they know what I'm talking about. The vocation we've chosen is is tough. We it is it is a grind, um, and uh, you have to you have to take care of yourself mentally more than physically, um, and and so. Again, I, I, th I think Tyler is is very um, balanced in that regard, and uh, and he's going to be just fine. And Tyler, have you ever thought about changing your last name or having a stage name so that there's no confusion? So, so here's my line, Bob. Um, I'm not related to Uncle Joe, is what I'm going to tell people, just to get them even more confused. But um, it, I, I've been at TRD 28 years. Um, I get texts uh, for Ty on occasion, um, and so we swap back and forth, but uh, outside of that, we're good. Go over here to Nate first. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. I have two for David. Um, at the risk of 
asking this to someone who just said you're a bundle of nerves and emotion, but you mentioned that whirlwind of the two days after the announcement. Was there one message or something that stuck out in particular that really touched you? So <clears throat> there, were, there, were, there were several, and, and, I'll, and most of them are personal, but I'll, I'll share one. And, and, um, and I don't think uh, Joe will mind. So I, I, I got a text message from Joe Gibbs. You know, Joe Gibbs, by the way, he texts. He communicates the way we all communicate. And it was literally one of the first ones. And it, he simply said, I miss you already, dash Joe. And it, it, it about made me cry. <laughs> you know, um, Joe and I, you've heard Joe before. But we have this ongoing kind of joke, like we're we're going to write a book, right? And um, and we talk about the chapters in that book, and we'll get through something, and we're like, "Yep, that's another chapter." And in and, and yet the um, and again, Joe and I talk about this 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 industry, the competitive nature. You're always fighting something, and. Um, and the, and the folks that can get through that, that can endure the battles and come out the other end, they become closer for it. Um, I love Joe. And, and um, I, again, I spent some formative years in, in, in Northern Virginia and in, came into the sport like there's no way I'm working with Coach Joe Gibbs. And, uh, and, and so... That was that was one that just stuck me right in the heart. And uh, when you're done with all of this, I think I've got this right. You all have done 18 seasons in your tour of duty in the Cup Series. So, from those two decades, like, what's the biggest thing you saw change in NASCAR from 2007 to 2024? And and looking forward, like, what do you think maybe the biggest challenge or the biggest thing that you need to look at in the horizon is? Well, as you know, coming at it from the from the OEM level, I think there's a couple of things I mentioned before. The way we the way we compete, the tools we bring to the racetrack. Um, I want to say, you know, we we have moved the needle, but I think more importantly, the um, the participation we have as a as a stakeholder in the sport. Toyota, Ford, Chevrolet, the relationships that we have with each other. And the, the work that we do collaboratively to advance our sport, you know, 20 plus years ago, I just, I don't think that existed. And so, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're competing for, for space. We're competing with many other forms of, of uh, entertainment and, and sports. And if we're not continually working on advancing our sport and bringing new fans to the racetrack then then we're, we're going to fail we're, we're going to fall behind and and so you know I, I personalize it to the OEMs because because that's who we are but it's not just us obviously it's it's the it's the the teams in that collaboration and um you know the drivers, how they work together again for the betterment of the sport. It's just, on the whole, uh, seems a lot more collaborative than than when it was 20 years ago. Back over in the back there. Stephen Sykes, Stephen Sykes, live in Global Media. First off, thank you very much for all what you've done for the racing. Uh, personally, I'm sad to see you go professionally. UVA grad, Wahoo Wah, so you can go. Um, <laughs> what does leadership mean to you in respects towards uh, younger drivers of the teams? Because you see many years you've been a gold standard and what others have fo tried to follow. What does leadership look like to you in, in respects towards today and other young drivers? Leadership is, um, is uh, certainly a bit of an intangible um the 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 position doesn't come with an entitlement of of respect that is something that is there or not that is something that is earned 
Um, again, in terms of my my own uh, sense of accomplishment, I, I probably more important than anything else is I want to believe that I treated people, whether they were friends, whether they're competitors, with um, with kindness, with respect, with with compassion, and um, uh, and so that I think that's a big part of being a leader. Um, in terms of the the, the TRD team, um, you can get into a little more you know a granular level, but um, I certainly learned early on in my career. Come came to work as a as a young engineer. I I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. I, I was. Um, <laughs> I'm so proud of that mechanical engineering degree that I have from Virginia Tech and the relationship I have with that university. They've been so kind to me, but I was not a bright shining star in uh, in their list of uh, alumni. And I came to appreciate again just the when, when I and I when I left, I went straight into the service, and I learned, you know, as a platoon leader that unless you know, I have the, the support of my platoon sergeants and my squad leaders. Um, I was going to, I was doomed to fail. And I took those lessons everywhere I've been. And I've, I've surrounded myself by, by capable people and, and people that uh, were instrumental in, in shaping a culture and, uh, and a commitment of excellence. And, um, and that's, that's, a little bit of my view on on leadership. Go over here, Michael Massey, front stretch. David, nice hat by the way. Is do you still want any uh, to be involved in racing in any kind of capacity, or are you going all in on the raising kids? <laughs> so, I love. Gosh, I love what we do. I I love racing. I I love all forms of racing. And um, I'll continue uh, to be a fan, um, and I'll I'll come back to the track on occasion, probably far less than you would you would expect, um, because the reason. Well, let me let me qualify. The reason, more often than not, that I will come back is is for the people. It's not for a quote unquote race. I've been to enough race races have been to enough racetracks but um but it's the people that i'll come back to to visit with and to to see um but uh in the immediate you know future so just to be clear i have a uh, 128 days in office left um i don't do lame duck well uh and and the irony is is of those 132 days i'm on the road 70 so <laughs> We'll go to Deb here. Deb Williams, Auto Week. David, will miss you. Tyler, welcome. And uh, we'll enjoy talking to you about TRD. Two questions. One, David, have you even stopped long enough to give a thought about what it's going to be like when we start 2025 and you're not having to worry about Rolex 24, you're not having to worry about the Daytona 500, have you even thought about that yet? Tyler and I uh, talk about this a lot, and, and I'm sure for many of you in this room, you go through the same emotional um, hurdle. You, you have to cross a hurdle. When you get up on, on New Year's Day um, or the day after, you, you have to be prepared to strap it back on and get after it. Usually... Usually we're on the road by the third or fourth of January, heading somewhere, um, and and what I've you know what I've come to um, find more and more difficult is getting myself mentally um, prepared for that, and and now again leaving my two grandsons, my 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 four year old is is you know like like we're tight i mean he's 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 my buddy and he he gets upset when when i leave and that that that's hard it gets harder um 
thank goodness for technology. But um, but come, you know, the the first of next year, it's going to be surreal. I, I I I don't know. I don't know how I'll handle it. My wife is a little terrified. Uh, um, had a test run with COVID. I was kind of, you know, there's a little silver lining there, and and I found out that not getting on an airplane for like two months or whatever it was, um, I didn't miss any of that. And I loved being home with my family. I really did. So um, it, it doesn't mean that there won't be moments like I need to get on an airplane, get the, get the frick out of here. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. And kind of on a different wavelength, with the two of you working together and working through this transition period, you actually went into the two weeks off with four engine issues. Have you figured out what were those, uh, what caused them? And also, do you feel that you've solved the issue going into this 14 week stretch? We were having such a nice time, Deb. <laughs> really? That is a Kelly Crandall question I'm asking for her. Tyler, why don't you, why don't you take that one? <laughs> So um, yes, we've, we've dug into each of those individually. Um, they are different issues. Um, we know what, what caused them. And so from that perspective, we are comfortable, as comfortable as you can be with some of the components involved um, with solving those problems. And, and let me just, just touch on that because many of you who were here 10, 11, 12 years ago, you probably got to know me through the crap storm that we were in the middle of, right? Um, that's that's when I was putting out in front of the media for the first time. It was, um, you know, I remember, I'll never forget, we were at Phoenix and Kyle Bush's engine failed in warm up, you know, on Sunday morning, right? Bob Carter's watching from his couch and like freaking, freaking out. Um, and, and so that's how I came again to get to know, know you all. And, and one of my, my, my biggest takeaways, and, and Tyler um, has seen it as well, is, is never run from your problems and get out in front of it and, and just be honest. And, um, and I, had to, I had to share some real tough, uh, tough things with, with you all. And, and I'm so uh, grateful for the respect and um, and the trust that, that all of you on this side of the industry have shown me over the years. Um, but uh, Deb, we'll, we'll, we'll get that stuff sorted, and um, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chris Powell, Couch Coach Live. David, congratulations on a great career and your upcoming uh, retirement. I know you talked about earlier the impact of Coach Gibbs. Uh, is there any others that um, have had a profound impact on your career? Well, um, everyone in this room on some level has had an impact uh, because because the common denominator for the most part is is I've been given a level of trust and um, in time. Um, and, and so um, there's, there's not too many jobs where you, you have that, but, but just to focus more at home and, and my, you know, the parent company, Toyota Motor North America, who enable us to do this and who decided that we, we should race in this sport, um, they have, you know, our, our, our top management have given me, uh, given my team the latitude and the freedom to build what we've done in this sport. And, and that's, that's such a luxury. And it comes, it becomes, you know, it, it comes because they have a trust, because you have a track record. And, um, and, the, and that's been amazing. But the people that I've, I've worked with over the years, Bob Carter, who retired uh, not too long ago, um, Ed Laukas, my, uh, my last boss, who, again, who retired a, a couple of years ago, um, you know, both played a, uh, a significant role in, um, in, in me 
in my team having the success that we that we have. But um, you know, again, looking looking more at, at this team here and um, and looking at the things that that uh, bring me so much pride. But it's it's working with you know helping be a part of bringing new organizations into our sport. Um, you know what what we did with uh, Furniture Row um, racing back in the day, just off the charts. Um, you know Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan putting their their trust in Toyota to to make a big bet in the sport. Um, it's it's um, it's breathtaking. Having having Jimmy Johnson cold call you and say hey. I want to come out to California and have dinner with you. Um, to be to be working with him, um, it's it's hard to put in words, but um, certainly all of those people have played a tremendous amount of influence, and uh, I care so much for 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 each of them. All right, thank you so much, David and Tyler. And and just one more thing, Liz. I, I'm not or Pam. I'm not going on uh, a retirement tour. Um, there'll be no gentlemen. Start your engines. Uh, we're we're going to put a bow around this. Um, you can start asking the the hard questions next. Uh, and um, but but thank you again. Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos. And if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.